I can't fight this feeling any longer. Yet I'm still afraid to let it show. Naomi filling in for Suki once again. I only wish I had the strength to let you go. <laughs> What's up there, Gober? Good, good evening. Good Hi evening to you, young lady. Honestly, I didn't realize you serenade me every time I'm every on second, here. Every show, every, before we start every show. I mean, we're on now, but before I hit that that open, you know, that open sequence. Yeah. I'm sure uh, the women out there are swooning like you're, you're gonna get a serenade. Listen, what a what a week we've already had. Chaz Palm and Terry on yesterday with a us. lot, a lot of good feedback from that interview. We're not even on on Mondays. <laughs> uh, and Chaz, when Chaz Palm and Terry says, Listen, I could do Monday at two o'clock, you, you do, do Monday, Monday at two o'clock, exactly. Bottom line. Now yeah. you just can't leave. Um <laughs> What a great guy. What a great guy. And I forgot uh, to ask him one question, though. Is it better to be loved or to be feared? Be feared. Right. That oh, was I forgot a, to ask that. Darn it. It's a little Machiavellian uh, advice yeah. right there. It's better we to love be you. We don't fear love. you, Scott. Go ahead. Um, listen, we have an amazing show tonight. Bob Smiley, comedian's coming up in just a few minutes. He is uh, very, very funny. Uh, he does these Smiley Minutes. He's got a podcast. He's all over the place. The guy is hysterical. Do uh, you think that's then, his real name, Smiley? Bob Smiley. I don't know. We'll ask him. Maybe he changed it. <laughs> maybe it was like Smilovitz, Smolitsky. <laughs> we'll, uh, or maybe he's like, I'm a comedian. Smile sounds smiley. good. It smiley. certainly works. It certainly yeah. works. Um, and then coming up after uh, Bob, Tatiana Mesenseva. Oh, I that was say good. That, I say that if you like that, huh? Wow. Um, Naomi, this young lady is 11 years old. She's from Russia. She's visiting the U.S., she is like one of those savant singer. She's a singer. She's she she writes. She rides horses. She flies planes. I mean, you yeah. name it. She, she does, does it, it all. And she's uh, only eleven. Wow. She's eleven years old. She's in New York. She's gonna come on with us a little later on. We're gonna talk about her. She's gonna sing. We're gonna do it all. You ready to rock and roll here on? This I'm Tuesday? ready. As ready as I'll ever be. The Suki and Scott Show. This is one of the funnest shows I've ever done. Hey! When you're with me, I'm smiling. It's musical. It's magical. Suki and Scott, it's seven of hearts. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I never this is a sexy show. Someone's getting some action. Now, these larger than life personalities are on an exciting new journey as they bring you the Suki and Scott Show. You guys I nailed it. You're great. You ask great questions. You listen. I answered you because I have respect for you guys, and it was a question respectfully put. The Suki and Scott Show is your one stop destination for humor. You like De Niro and Kate Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> Counselor! Entertainment. Just Just girl. girl! Wonderful! Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? And optimism. You guys have such amazing energy. Ultraviolet lighting gets in there and it just fights. It just fights the uh, gun flu. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Let's laugh together. I love him. The Suki and Scott Show. Uh, did you see John Di Domenico in there? He does Trump better than Honestly, Trump does Trump. I had forgotten what Mr. Trump sounded like <laughs> until just then. Oh, he'll be back. He'll be back. Don't oh, you yeah, worry. I'm sure. I'm uh, sure. Listen, Naomi, uh, first of all, um, how are you, dear? How was your weekend? I'm doing okay. You know, I'm getting in some golf because, you know, yeah. I'm a big golfer. And uh, sure, sure. yeah, other than that, uh, just trying to enjoy the summer. How about you? What have you been up to? I uh, Listen, I'm just, you know, plugging along, <laughs> doing this show. Tied to that uh, desk right there. Yeah, I'm tied to this desk. I got WWE. I have an audition stuff. I don't have unless I haven't left the chair all day. <laughs> All I do is change out the Caddyshack poster, and uh, I'm good to go. You have a mini fridge over there. I just want to know. I like have with, a fridge with down here. Yes, I have a masseuse who comes in once oh. a day. Yeah, yeah, she works <laughs> out the kinks. Um, listen, before we bring in uh, Bob Smiley, we have uh, you know a special note tomorrow morning, 11:30 Eastern. Another special show. Um, Lawrence Gowan is the lead singer of Styx. Yes. Since 1999, Lawrence going to be on the show. Uh, but it uh, was one of those things. Styx is on tour right now, and tomorrow morning at 11.30 was really the only time he was available. So that means, you know, we make ourselves yeah. available 
and get it going. We aim to please whatever time you're you're available. <laughs> yeah, if you're listen, if you're not available at this time, we'll try to we'll try to get you in. Uh, the little update on our on Stir, the streaming platform owned by Sinclair, Suki, and Scott Show. Naomi still for the last number four one. months the number one uh, streaming show, beating out Heartland, Deal or No Deal, Forensic Files, Carson's dead, but he's still plugging along. Uh, Daily Flash, Silk Stockings. Remember that show, Silk Stockings? Yeah, that was. You ever watch, did you ever watch right? that? Was it? Well, a... it was the the two detect Rob Estes and um, the good? Uh, oh, I forgot her name. Good looking lady. They were they were partners, and it was kind of sort of a detective you know, crime detective, show. Yeah, sexy detective crime yeah. show. Never saw it. Um, never saw. It. Never, never saw that one. <laughs> uh, listen, Naomi, would you like to just before we bring in Bob, you want to just say hello to some of the folks who uh, already logged on from around the country? I would love to say hi, yeah, and yeah, I'm... they love to hear their names. Oh, let's let's. Uh, oh, yeah, that's if I had them on, but I don't oh, have them on. Oh, okay. you don't have the comments on? Well, no, I, do. I do. Sherry, Sherry Hetrick. There you go. Oh, bring her back. I needed to. <laughs> I needed to read her comment. <laughs> well, nice to meet you, Sherry. Thanks. Oh, you for don't see in. you don't see him on the side, huh? You not on the side. Susan so. Smith, Jeannie Clay. If you hit if you hit uh, comments, you should be able to see the comments coming up. Yeah, let's do that. But where's you the? Don't, you I don't, don't see that. Oh, huh? okay. I, I'm hitting it now. Hold on. There oh, I got you. Okay. No, Mabel. I will, listen, I won't even ask Mabel. you to try and share this show. No, I, I'm getting to page. that. <laughs> um, yeah, Jeannie, Barbara Taylor. There you go. Philippine Richardson says, hi, all. Anna Hoover. Oh, Nancy Wilkinson Sparks. Oh, they're oh, <laughs> Jeannie Clay. Thank you, Jeannie, for such kind words. All right, that's good. Oh, <laughs> I'd like to talk to them all day. That would be so cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, again, we got Bob Smiley coming up in a minute. Tatiana Mezenseva, 11 year old savant singer. She's coming up. But before we do that, we have a couple of quick uh, mailbag questions for oh. you. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, you know, usually, usually they're for Suki, but since you've been in the last two weeks, everybody's flocking to you to ask you yeah. questions. Oh, they feel man. like you have this wisdom, this knowledge. Yeah, um, yeah. Here you go. Uh, dear Naomi, I see you've colored your roots like you said, <laughs> and now you have beautiful blonde hair. Hope you didn't do it because of that bully Scott. Uh, <laughs> No, Kristen in I, New Hope, Pennsylvania. Kristen, thank you for your concern. I actually had a regularly scheduled appointment, and nice. it just happened to be after trying to look presentable for this show. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, here's uh, here's another one. Uh, yeah. dude, you know me. Heard you were a great golfer, per my sources in Rhode Island. Any tips you can throw this hacker to improve his game? <laughs> Signed, Ball Slicer in uh, Boise, Idaho. <laughs> oh, that would be assuming that I am actually able to give tips because I'm a good golfer. I'm not mm -hmm. a good golfer. I'm still hacking around. But I do have a 21-year-old and a 19-year-old son who teach me how to. So you need to have kids who know what they're doing. They're, right. they're awesome. So I learned from my kids. Good find enough, good kids. Find kids to help you. Uh, listen, Nomer, we have uh, Bob Smiley's coming up. He's uh, been flying all day. Guy's jet lag. He's in a hotel room. He was nice enough to come on. I saw Bob on Instagram. I said, I got to get this guy on the show. He's funny as hell. Um, I'm going to show him. I'm going to show you a little bit of Bob in action. Okay. All uh, right. And, and then we'll bring him in live on the other side. Take a look. Okay. So this happened to my pastor's shoe this morning. The details. Never went in the there went the sole to my shoe. I'm going to preach barefooted for the rest of this day. Uh, I'm standing on holy ground. Amen. Okay, let's see how many jokes I can squeeze in and still keep this under a minute. Guess he won't be on preachers and sneakers. He really tried, but there was one soul he just couldn't save that morning. Best sermon ever? I mean, it was good, but I don't know. I don't think he was a shoe in. His shoes landed on the church bench next to me, and now I know why they call it a pew. Pastor, you should stick to Captain Hook's least favorite shoe. You know, Crocs. Someone throw this man dose banana pills, you know? He really needs a pair of slippers. Oh, the Bible talks poorly of lazy people, so yeah, I get it now. Get rid of those loafers. <laughs> anyway, way to handle it, Pastor. And it was a great sermon, too. Well, I'm told. I was uh, busy writing down all these jokes. Let me know if I missed any shoe puns by commenting down below. Maybe you'll make me laugh, you know, see what it's like to have the shoe on the other foot. <laughs> there he is, ladies and gentlemen. He's a shoe in. You're a shoe in. <laughs> What's up, guys, man? I, I, I'm a huge fan of the show, and I knew eventually you would run out of celebrity standard. <laughs> I would get my shot, and today is the day. So, wow. Oh, I love Bob, I, I got to tell you, man, there are certain times 
where facially, and I'm sure people have told you this, you look like who? Robin Williams. There you yeah, go, my absolutely. friend. I mean, that, and I know Naomi was thinking Brad Pitt. I get that. I was going to say Brad Pitt. Yeah. It's the eyebrows. It's the eyebrows. Well, Brad's brother, you know. Bob, <laughs> listen, man, if they if they ever do a, a, a biopic on on uh, Robin Williams, dude, you could, you could jump in there and play him. Yeah, I was in Dallas uh, last night and then uh, Oklahoma the night before, and – I got probably 20 comments uh, at each show. Like, you look like Robin Williams. I always tell people I wish my bank account looked like Robin Williams. <laughs> true, true. Are you just you're traveling all over the place? Are you you're doing your shows everywhere? Yeah, everything's uh, opening back up. So I'm in uh, I'm in Napa, California, you know, wow. suffering for the Lord. And um, I'm doing shows here. And then I'm in uh, Vacaville and, and Roseville this weekend in California. And yeah, it's thank goodness everything's opening back up and I'm, you know, getting back out there. And it seems like people want to, like, they need to laugh now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And Bob, yeah. listen, that, that's, that's why we came up with this show last March, just yeah. because people, everybody, the news was so crappy every day. Yes. It was a nice little escape. Um, but listen, when you, when you're on stage, do you, do you rattle off jokes like you do on Instagram or is it more storytelling? It, it's it's whatever the crowd looks like. Like I try to read the crowd as they come in, and you know if it's a bunch of high school kids, and you know, or if it's I, I do all clean comedy. So if it's a bunch of families and stuff, then uh, I'll start the show by just rattling off a bunch of one liners and stuff, and then I'll get into more story forms. And you know, again, I've got a lot of families coming to my show, so I'll tell a lot of I'll tell stories about when I was a kid, and then I'll tell stories about me having kids, and you know, I just I really try to hit the the material for the audience for that individual night. Were you always funny as a kid, Bob, or did this happen later in life? <laughs> uh, my teachers didn't think so. Um, even though I tried, I tried, I would do a set every day at the school, but they uh, are not fans. So, uh, but no, I, I tried to be funny. My dad was my school superintendent and he would come and eat lunch with me every day. And I noticed wow. that people, people would come and sit at our table. So we were the cool table because they wanted to hear me and my dad just be funny. So I was, yeah, I was kind of funny and my dad's hilarious. So I got to, you know, kind of study at the feet of the master. I love it. I love that you're a clean comic. I mean, that is that the, the, the way you bill yourself? Because truly it's hard to find comedians who don't get really rude and off color. And this is the kind of show everybody can watch, right? With yeah. We can all laugh. Yeah, I love it. Like, again, last night I was in Dallas and uh, I had a, a grandma sitting in front row with her walker and she was her grandson was next to her. And her grandson was like a uh, goth, like, you know, spiky hair, yeah. and <laughs> face piercing. He, he kind of looked like he fell face first into a tackle box. And I'm looking <laughs> out at these two people and I'm like, they couldn't be more different. But I love that she brought her grandson to this comedy show and they both just were laughing. And they, you know, the grandmother wasn't worried about me saying anything, you know, bad or dirty, you know. I mean, she couldn't go to the green room. Uh, that would have gotten bad, but they would have. I'm totally kidding. Um, but yeah, I, I really do. I like doing clean comedy just because I like, uh, I want comedy for, for everybody. I want everybody to be able to come to my show. Right. Yeah. And I know people can, can also find you on Dry Bar, I think, too, right? Yeah, and you mentioned Robin Williams. I remember when my dry bar uh, dropped, it was right as the pandemic was starting. And I honestly thought, oh, great, this is my gift to the world because they're going to be shut in. And, you know, here's a whole comedy special for free that they can watch. And so I was all excited to, to read, you know, people saying, oh, wow, I really need to laugh. And the first the first comment was, he looks like Robin Williams. And then somebody else wrote, he looks like I ordered Robin Williams off Wish.com. Wow. I was like, is anybody listening to the jokes? And then right. the third comment was, he doesn't look like Robin Williams. He looks like Conan O'Brien and the guy from Whose Line Is It Anyway had a baby and couldn't feed the baby. It's like... <laughs> Okay, that's hilarious. But, <laughs> that is funny. Uh, but I really did. I wanted that dry bar special to like really encourage people and you know, because there was a lot of depression going on. And mm -hmm. so I was reading all these comments about me looking like Robin Williams, and finally I saw the comment that I was waiting for and it said, Man, thank you for using your talent to bring a little bit of light in a dark place. We're all needing to uh, laugh like that. Thank you for doing that. And I was like, you know what? That is why. 
I have that second Facebook account, so I can write on there what other people should have been writing. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I don't think they knew it was me, but you know, it was up there. It was totally yeah. uh, it's kind of like it's like our mailbag that we have here. <laughs> Scott, did you know that Bob has five kids? Yes. Well, listen, I was going to say, you know, you, Bob, you, you get your family involved in a lot of stuff that you do. Matter of fact, I think I even is, is are one of your kids also uh, a comedian as well? Yes. Um, he actually just started open. He was going to open for me. His first show was going to be in March of 2020. And it was the week that everything shut down. So that was the first of 73 shows that I had canceled that year. So oh, wow. he had to wait a whole other year, but um, he has since... Uh, he's open for me twice now, and I hate to say it, but the the kid's good. Like he's actually, you know, he's got a solid, you know, ten minutes. So we'll see how, you know, how long he lasts. But yeah, he's a, uh, you know, picking up the torch and running with it. That's great. Nice. That's uh, great. Rory, Rory Wright says you look like Tom Cruise, by the way. So oh, you see, you got I like that Rory. Go. I like Rory. No, that's a compliment. I like right? people that tell the truth and they're not afraid to say. It. <laughs> <laughs> but are you telling lots of bad dad jokes because you are a father of five? Here's here's what I'm very fortunate for. I, I try to really work on really good comedy. I don't like to, if I think something's hacky or something, like I'll kick it out of my show. And so I'm very fortunate that my kids' friends think I'm cool, which helps me. Oh, be cool my, my kid. And so they'll come over to the house and they'll do something crazy. And I've had, this has happened a lot where the kids will stop and they'll be like, is that good enough to be in your act? Like they <laughs> my act, so uh, I, love it. I try to stay away from dumb dad jokes. I, you know, I feel like that's what everybody else can tell, and then I offer something a little different. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. That's great. That's great. And you know what I love about your Instagram? You know, you could log on to uh, onto your Instagram, and you have these smiley minutes um, oh, yeah. where you just you go through some news th items and and you kind of make fun of them. Here's one that I grabbed a couple weeks back, but take take a look, and then we'll talk about these on the other end. Welcome to Smelly Minute. With news coming out that UFOs are real and Dr. Fauci's emails proving the virus was leaked from a lab and all the controversy over the government covering up lies to us, everyone is naturally focused on one major question. Did Donald Trump wear his pants backwards? He actually didn't, but one thing's for certain, that story has legs. The late Jeffrey Epstein surprisingly stated in his will that his multi-million dollar island was to be given to a poor Middle Eastern gentleman named Hadid Nokir Roussel and the rest of his estate was to go to an Asian family with the last name uh, Klein Pawn Kyle May. So random. Floyd Mayweather knocked Logan Paul out during their bout Sunday night, but held him up until he came to because the fighters had agreed earlier to go the distance in hopes of a rematch making them both a ton more money. The fake fight angered boxing fans and I totally get it. That's why I only watch wrestling. Have a great day. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's fine. I love Hadid Nakil. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, I try to, I try not to offend anybody, but I'll think of these jokes and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna try yeah, to yeah, that's it. Yeah. see if I can see some stuff by. Yeah. You do a great bit on um, getting married, and the one line that cracked me up is about your fiance. Mm -hmm. What does fiance really mean? Oh yeah, it stands for uh, finance me, and so now I get it. Yeah, once I, I got a fiance, I realized that that's what it really means is to finance. I've never heard me. that. I'm going to use that from now on in my joke it's bag. Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. And I, I saw something today, uh, which I found. Naomi, I'll ask you this question first. Yes. I'll, okay. I'll it out on his Twitter, your TSA pre-check, but your spouse is not. What do you do at the airport? Uh, I hate to fly, so I'm not in the airport at all. <laughs> so, I don't have an answer. I don't know. I, I. Do you leave Bob? Do you leave Bob behind at the regular? Uh, probably. <laughs> you could go through the TSA pre-check and not have to take your shoes off or take your laptop mm. out of the bag and you can check in. I can tell you what the wrong answer is. What? Uh, after today, I can tell you what the wrong answer is. What's that? <laughs> Not leave your wife and go through TSA pre-check <laughs> because if she handed you the wrong ticket and you have her ticket and she has yours, then it stops everybody. <laughs> and we have to figure out how it literally, th this actually happened in Houston airport today. Um, I was like, Hey, I'm going to go through TSA pre-check. And she was like, but we're, 
to get, and I was like, yeah, but I don't want to take my shoes off. And she was like, okay, fine. I didn't know it was going to turn into a deal, but I had her ticket and she had mine. Oh, and we God. couldn't get our apps to work on our phone because, you know, I'm a comedian, so I can't afford a good, I've got the iPhone 4. So, <laughs> and so it literally turned in, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Crocodile Dundee, but you know at the end where they, they pass the person over the crowd? Yeah, yeah, yeah the crowd, yeah. sir. Okay. We were doing that with our tickets, like get that to the hot girl with the skirt on over there. What and a disaster. It was, it was terrible, but it ended up being a, a, a good comedy moment. And she should forgive me any any moment now. So it's been about yeah, it's hours, so we'll see. Yeah. Oh, so well. did, she, did she come with you across uh, over to California? Yeah, it's funny whenever uh, she calls it going out and supporting my ministry. So uh, we're in Napa and we're going to San Francisco. And so nice. she felt like she needed to support my ministry. But like when I when I do shows in Alma, Arkansas and stuff, she doesn't really feel like uh, the Lord has called her to support me. <laughs> it's only the, the good spots. Yeah. I honestly hate flying so much. I can only imagine with all the flying you do, you must have some flying, funny flying stories airplane stories yeah the one that um the one that cracked me up one time uh was i'd never listened to the announcements and there were two announcements that i i just happened to listen to one day and i was like how has nobody talked about this uh one which i think is ridiculous is in the event of a water crash landing you can use your seat cushion <laughs> as a flotation of a see i love that scott gets it right away i got you the deal, guys if i'm ever in a really scary crash the seat cushion i was yeah, just it seems a little bit Lame. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and they said, hug it tightly to your chest. I'm not like, I'm not squeezing it after I was just really scared. Uh, the other one that I thought was really funny was I knew the oxygen mass falled. I thought oxygen just started flowing, but it doesn't. It says to start the flow of oxygen. Tug yeah. oxygen on the tip. Well, who's going to be going 10,000 miles an hour in a mountain going, ah, <laughs> <laughs> So I, yeah, you I made me feel so much better about flying. So. Yeah, now she's never getting in a plane. <laughs> yeah, she's never getting on a plane now. <laughs> that is great. And look, you got the um, the podcast as well, right? Hook, line, and smiley. Yep, yep. My wife and I started the podcast about a year a year ago, and uh, man, it's done really well. I'm I'm, I'm really proud. Um, we're a blended family, so uh, we have a lot of comedy and stuff on there, but we talk about what it's like to have, you know, five, like you said, Naomi, we have five tax deductions, all boys. They range from ages wow. 11 to 22. Um, oh yeah. I'm reading the comments on the side. Uh, my oldest son is 22. So if anybody needs the correct answer to any question, <laughs> he knows yeah. 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 mine yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I got five that's boys. That's gotta be crazy. Unbelievable. When you, Bob, what's, what's like a, a staple story or joke that you tell about those kids when you're out on that stage that, you know, every night you're going to hit this story and it works every time. Um, I'll usually ask the parents if they have kids that sneak up on you in the middle of the night. And there's always people that have kids. And if this happened last night, um, there was a little kid in my show and he, he raised his hand. He goes, I do that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> stop it. You know, <laughs> it with him. Yeah. But the bit is because we have an 11 year old that thinks it's hilarious to sneak up in the middle of the night. So like 2 a.m. I'll just like open my eyes and look over <laughs> and there he's just like, Boom, right there. Yeah. And so the bit goes like this. I go, um, you know, and he doesn't say anything. That's the creepiest thing. He just stands there for like 10 minutes, just, you know, holding the kitchen knife. And um, <laughs> and then I always get to laugh and I'll wait. I'll wait until the laugh dies down. And I go, come on, guys. You know, that's a joke. I'm from Texas. It's a gun. That's, a gun. Yeah. So that's, that's, a, that's one of the bits I know always just like resonates. Oh, it's so funny. And and you, I, I also know you have um, these books that you do, these average boy books, right? Yes. Yes. Um, you really did your research, man. Yeah. There's a lot going on. You, uh, yeah, no, because I, you know, you scam through and, and I mean, you really learn a lot about somebody. What what made you come up uh, with these books and what what's the premise of, of average boy? So my when my first CD came out, uh, Focus on the Family, I uh, got the got got the CD and they were like, man, this is really good stuff. Have you ever thought about writing uh, a humor article? We have a magazine called Clubhouse Magazine for middle school kids. 
And so they wanted me to write a story about going back to school. And so I wrote this true story about me getting this horrible haircut the day before we went back to school. It was like, my dad was like, we're going to make sure he doesn't date at all. Like just <laughs> the horrible. And so I was writing this story, but I thought of a cell phone joke that I thought would be really perfect for this story. But because I didn't have cell phones when I was a kid, I couldn't make it me. So I just created this character and I just called him average boy. And so they printed that one article and all of a sudden they got flooded with all these middle school kids saying, Hey, can you let this average boy kid write more articles? So that was 18 years ago. So I've been writing a monthly column. So I've written these two, uh, these books uh, called, yeah, they're, uh, they're average boys. And then when the pandemic hit, uh, we started doing the average boy podcast that you can see on the screen. So I write these funny stories and then my editor is like the adult in, uh, that's on the podcast. And then I do, you know, I play average boy and do his voice and everything. And then, so we put out these podcasts that are for families to listen to together. And it has a lot of encouraging things and we deal with a lot of serious stuff, but you know, I make it in a funny way, but we deal with like peer pressure and why you need to guard your eyes from certain things. And, you know, a lot of those like important things as you're growing up. Wow. That's very admirable. I never asked you though, is your real last name Smiley? Oh yeah. So is that your real last name? Bob? I heard that at the beginning and I did change my name. My real name is Robert Smiley. Oh. <laughs> but I thought Bob sounded better on the stage, but no, my last name really is Smiley. And in fact, the first uh, radio interview I ever did when I started stand up, uh, I was talking to this and it was a big radio station. I was touring uh, with a band called the Newsboys and they were doing like we were passing the phone and doing interviews. So it was a big deal. And the first question was like, is your last name really? Well, because I grew up with the last name Smiley, I never even thought about it. And I was like, yeah, why would I change my name? Oh, so my first question on a major radio station, I sounded like an idiot because I just didn't even <laughs> think about it. Yeah, last name is, it's always been smiling. Well, it fits you. It fits you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. That is so funny. Bob, when you tour and you're doing these comedy shows, um, you know, around, oh, there's your, your cult or smiley, right? That's yeah, that's what I Feed me um, do, wow. do you ever come towards, uh, you know, the East Coast, the New York area at all or no? Yeah, quite a bit. I haven't been to the New York area since, well, since 2019, you know, like before everything uh, shut down. But uh, yeah, every once in a while, like I, I'll play. Uh, yeah, that's, that's one of my comedy specials, Breaking Bob. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I, I, I get over to the East Coast quite a bit. I'm, for some reason, California loves me more than any other state. I'm uh, from Texas, but I play California maybe 30 times a year, and then I'm probably over in the East Coast, maybe all the East Coast states, maybe 30 times uh, in a year. So I need to get a little bit more love over there, guys. Come on. Yeah, yeah. listen, man. We'll come see you. I'll laugh my ass off. Wow, you're nice hysterical. You're um, funny. Is there ever a part of the country, though, you think doesn't get your comedy? Who doesn't Who's who doesn't get it, really? Oh, that's a great question. That's a really good question. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the people that are waiting for the dirty jokes, those people. Right? Well, I have done some corporate events where it's an open bar, and I guess it opened at 7 a.m. And nobody <laughs> called me. And I've done some of those shows where people are, they'll, they'll pick up on the fact that I don't cuss. Yeah. And I've had in corporate events, like people shouting out, you know, say the F word. And I'm like, you know, fun. Like, I, like I, won't, I won't get it to them, you know. But, uh, yeah, and I, I I do a couple of you know comedy clubs every year, and um, every once in a while you get somebody that's you know wanting me to talk about stuff just to see if I'll you know break and yeah like yeah that. well, that's my other question do you do you swear when you're alone with yourself <laughs> no and no. it's not because I'm holy and righteous but okay. um, my <laughs> dad. Good. My dad's always used substitution words and he uses words from the Old Testament. So yeah. one of our, so it's almost more fun if I get mad, it's more fun for me to yell like, oh, Shadrach, you know, <laughs> like, like, oh, son of a bed So, Oh, well, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. So read your Bible, children, if you're there listening. There you go. Okay. <laughs> but but it's not, nice. <laughs> so, yeah. So we, we don't really swear and, and it's not because we're holier than thou or, you know, better or whatever, but, um, it just, it calms me down faster if I'll say a funnier word. And so that's just, that's just what I do. Yeah. And isn't that the premise of, of dry bar comedy, right? The dry bar meaning no cursing, right? Because most of the no folks curse. on there don't curse. 
Yeah, you have to actually you have to sign a, a clause that you will not swear uh, in your act. And you also have to watch a video of what's considered swearing. And, wow. also, and it's weird because I've been doing stand up for this is my 21st year. Like it's great. You know, like my hotel shampoo collection is massive. So I can <laughs> prove that I've been everywhere. And it was weird me having to watch this of like words you can't say. And I was like, yeah. I don't say those in real life, much less. You know, yeah. That's, That's funny. You even call it dry bar because dry bar to us ladies is a place where you go to get your hair blown out. So right, I was confused. Right, the, yeah, so I was so like, all... wait, Dry Bar, what are you talking about? But Dry Bar is a good name for- uh, dry, bar, new... dry Bar comedy is, yeah. is huge right now. They're all over social that. media. And they have, you know, many of the comedians who have been on have come from Dry Bar. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it's just, they've got so many talented people and it's it's uh, it's heavily followed. Uh, Bob, who were, you know, growing up, who were your comedy heroes that you looked up to? Uh, I really liked, uh, I had a, uh, this is going to tell everybody how old I am, but I had a VHS tape. Of, uh, my parents, I have those too, Bob, so that's okay. My parents made that kind of money. We had yeah. a VCR. And uh, so I had uh, Howie Mandel um, stand-up special, and so I really liked that energy. I liked that he would tell a joke and act like he didn't know why it was funny. And he yeah, like, love what, 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 you know, like that. Love I liked that. that energy. I also like Gary, a guy named Gary Shandling. Sure. I love, I love Gary's Gary family. Yeah. God rest his soul. He passed, didn't he? Yes, yes he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he passed. But the, it was he, it was kind of like nobody knew. He wasn't really that sick, and then he just and he just like, passed. But he was very dry. Like he was just dry comedy. But his so his HBO, you know, it's the Gary Shandling show was was yeah. groundbreaking, yeah. phenomenal show. Yes. Yeah. He had the It's the Gary Shandling Show, and he had the Larry Sanders Show. Larry, right, Larry, Larry Sanders. Sanders. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. And he just, I liked his style because he he told jokes on stage like he was uncomfortable, and he was going to keep telling jokes until somebody <laughs> let him get off stage. Right, right, right. Yeah. I really liked those two vastly different style of comedy. Yes, yeah. yes, for sure. Right, Bob. Listen, man. Thank you so much for coming. I know you're you're tired. You're flying around. Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, people, for this. <laughs> people can see you uh, at bobsmiley.com. Yep. Uh, you also have the podcast, Hook, Line, and Smiley. Yep. Uh, and also these fantastic books, The Average Boy Podcast, man. You're very busy and uh, just keep going, my friend. Love to, you know, when you come to the Northeast, I I'd love to come see you and yes. have you on again. Okay, man. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on, like I said. Yes. And you stay well and, and no swearing. No swearing. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, have fun out in California, my friend. All right, we'll see you guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, take care. Bye bye. Oh, uh, Naomi, how great was he? He's so fun. He's you know, so you, cute. You know the 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 biggest thing about coming on on a show like this that's you know this platform, right? Digital. You got to yeah. come with. You got to bring energy. Oh yeah, you he's got. got it that's the one he, thing you have to have is energy, and he certainly's got that energy. And yeah, he's he, you know very quick witted guy. And man, oh man, if he doesn't look like Robin Williams, he uh, it's, it's it was kind of scary. Right? A little bit there, yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness, love uh, it, love it. They're we funny. still have uh, lots more show to go. Uh, Tatiana's coming up. Uh, Diaz is hanging out with her. Our man Diaz. Um, I just wanted to show you one more thing. Uh, I feel like oh, I, we had one more from the uh, from from oh the mailbag from the mailbag yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't want it to go to waste um, dear <laughs> Naomi what's your favorite movie and why that's Dominic from Brooklyn where where Diaz actually lives well, what's well, you your know favorite what that movie is. and why well you know it was a Bronx Tale yesterday <laughs> this is a Bronx Tale. <laughs> It's uh, my story. Yeah, honestly, the sound of music is my favorite, my all-time favorite. Sound of, really? And what's your favorite song from Sound of Music? Uh it would be Edelweiss. 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 Sing it for me. I I cannot carry a tune in a bag. Uh, me, unlike you, chooses not to sing even though I I don't yeah. care if I'm good or not. Apparently, I anyway. no. Yeah. Um, so, out of all the amazing songs in Sound of Music, you got a doe, a deer, a female deer, right? right? And you also have the hills are alive with the sound of music. But when when the captain plays Edelweiss, yes. and the family is sitting around, and Julie Andrews is looking at him, 
and she's looking at, you know, he's looking at her. It uh -huh. is the most romantic scene ever. How about so long, farewell, <laughs> Avita, say <laughs> goodnight. <laughs> I hate to go and leave this pretty side. And then the only other one I think I remember from the from the movie is I was 16. Going going 17. <laughs> That's a great one. So apparently you like the movie musical. Oh, lo I love it. Not my favorite yeah. movie in the world. I wouldn't go number one. I don't even know top 10, but okay, I still but love the what movie. What is your favorite movie? You know what? I'm 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 torn. I'm You're always torn? torn between like yeah. Scarface, yeah, Good Fellas. The Godfather. Uh, yeah, all those types of moves. That genre is in my favorite. Yeah. Then, then you go, then I go over to Mel Brooks side with like Blazing Saddles. Oh, yes, a classic. Young yeah, there's so many categories. You have to split it up to my favorite comedy, yeah. my favorite mob movie. You yeah, know. No, I love that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, listen, Tatiana's coming up in just a second. Okay. Um, I, I, there were sources that told me that we may have gotten Phil back tonight. Uh, oh, the Phil. The so, Phil. So, in, instead of Phil, uh, here's what I got from Phil. Oh. Down in the valley, valley so low, hang your head over and hear the wind blow. Hear the wind blow, dear, hear the wind blow, hang your head over, I love you so. Hey, Suki and Scott and everybody watching the show. Just wanted to check in with you guys. We are at Black Canyon of Gunnison in the National Park in uh, Colorado. Just wanted to uh, share this beautiful view with you and uh, say I miss you and we'll see you soon. That was incredible. Did Who's you got see? it better than Phil? Who's got it better than Phil? I have never been to Colorado and I would love to go. That I was amazing. in and out. Yeah, I was in and out of every state for WWE. Like I flew yeah. in, went to an arena, left. Never got to see uh, anything. I never really got to Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico. I'd love to check out all those spots. Some amazing uh, landscapes. Just gorgeous. Yeah. Like getting in, get in an RV and just go. I do it. Or right? When are we going? You can take just this Cookie and Scott show on the road. Well, I was thinking of doing it with like five strippers in, in, in the RV. <laughs> no, that's not the kind of like show to, I want to watch. Like, you know? If you'd like to join me. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, are you ready for this lovely young lady? I am. I'm excited to meet this young lady. Uh, Tatiana Mezenseva. I hope I said that right. Probably She'll not. Know. She'll no. let me know. She'll <laughs> let me know on the other side. Um, she's 11 years old from Russia. She's visiting the New York area. Yeah. I'm going to show you uh, her, her, her singing. She's phenomenal. She's 11 years old. I, I, I have an 11 year old. She's running yeah. through mud in, in sleep away. <laughs> this young lady. So cute she, to me, your daughter. <laughs> she, yeah. She sings. She's riding horses. Uh, here she is, Naomi. And then we'll bring her in on the other okay. side. Take a look. I can touch the sky just like a butterfly. That's the way I am. Catch me if you can. I'll be running like a river from the mountain high. That's the way I am. Do you feel the same? Yeah, 11, 11 years yeah. old, Naomi, 11, there they are. There they are, hey guys, how are you? Good, 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 good. Thank uh, there's you. my boy Diaz. Ta uh, so is it, is it, do we call her Tanya or Tatiana? Which one does she like? Me, Tanya. Tanya? Oh, it's so much easier. Thank all right, you. Tanya. That is easier, yes. How you guys doing? Diaz, first of all, last time we saw you, you were in Kazakhstan. Yeah. Uh, with our with our girl Irie, who is a, a national treasure 
pop star out there. Um, and now you guys, you're with uh, Tanya, who's in from Russia. And, and well, you guys are in New York right now? Yep. Yeah, we are in New York City in the heart of Manhattan. And you That's have beautiful. a recording studio right there behind you, I see. Yeah. yeah so you're yeah. ready to ready to do a big uh, big hit. You're recording uh, one song, lots of songs. What are you doing? We're recording a song. We one special song. Of the recording, uh, Tatiana's one of her first singles that she's doing here in the States. So as you can see, everything is, is up and running. Nice. Wow. So, uh, took a little break to, to speak with you guys. Now, she she's in the studio recording a song, uh, Diaz, that you wrote. Is that correct? Yes. That's unbelievable. What's the name of the song? The the working title is Smile. Ah, love now, it. Here's the hundred thousand dollar question: Can <laughs> Can Tanya give us? Can she give us a little acapella spot of the song or no? Okay. Oh. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. You have such a beautiful voice, Tanya. You really do. You remind me of like a Taylor Swift because she started around your same age, maybe even younger. And do you even like Taylor Swift? Is Do you look up to her? I know you have a lot of idols in the music business, but you do remind me of her. Thank you. Uh, yes, actually, I know Taylor Swift. Do you like her? Do you like her music? Well, I sometimes listen to her music. Like, not always. I'm not a big fan, but sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. I nice. think, wait, I, I think your biggest, your biggest music, the people that you like, I bet you you're like a Lady Gaga fan. Thank you. Right? Well, I, I'm not listening to Lady Gaga as much as to Madonna. Oh, you like you're a Madonna fan, huh? Oh, Madonna! Wow. Your, that's, that's, yeah. What What's your favorite Madonna song? Maybe Jump or Poker Face. Like she has lots of. Wait. Oh, Gaga's Poker Face. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's still jet lag, guys. It's still. Jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> they They just arrived here. What? Uh, two days ago, and. Uh, Tatiana is is busy with her schedule and you know. Yeah. Okay, my favorite Lady Gaga song is Poker Face. Poker Face, yes. And Madonna's favorite song is Jump. Finish. Jump. Okay. Well, nice. listen, I I know that you were uh in that what was a uh, bird was it Birdland last night? Yeah. And I saw a video of you singing. Uh, was it a million dreams? Yes. I, I need I need to hear like thirty you seconds because you, you sang it so beautifully. I wanted our audience to, to hear you sing that. I close my eyes and I can see the world is waiting up for me. Let it go my own. Through the dark, through the door, through I know what's been before. But it feels like home. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say I lost my mind. I don't care, I don't care, so call me crazy. We can live in the world that we design. Cause every night I lie in bed. Brightest colors fill my head. A million dreams are keeping me awake. I think of what the world could be. A vision of the one I see. A million dreams is all it's gonna take. Oh, a million dreams for the world with them. Wow. Oh. So beautiful. You got to hit the record button on that one. Record <laughs> that. Naomi, when, when my daughter gets home from summer camp, she's punished. She's punished. 
She's, she's <laughs> funny. Uh, my daughter. Yeah, yeah no, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, listen, I, I, my daughter's 11 years old. We sing and have fun in the car, but she in no way, shape or form would she ever be able to do it. Polished and professional like you've been doing it since you're what, four years old? Since four? Uh, yes, I, I heard <laughs> she heard forty. Did you say forty? Oh no, not no. I said four. I said four. But honestly, <laughs> you you started as obviously a very young girl have this God given talent truly, and you are continuing to perfect that. But you won a lot of contests, right? Um, did you your family? Do you come from a singing family? Did they put you in these contests, kind of thing, or how did it how did it all happen? Well, at first, when I was studying at Academy of Igor Kipoy, uh, my mom just asked me, do you want to take a part in Eurovision Song Contest 2019? Well, I thought, why not? Why not? So I agreed. And then we just sang together at Eurovision. Well, not together with my mom, together with my boy. Yeah, wait, wait a second. Because I saw a lot of this Eurovision, and I want to know, who's this kid... <laughs> That you're that you're palling around with and singing songs with, he's with you everywhere you go, and he's very um, handsome. <laughs> he's a very handsome, very talented young man. But how did you two get together? Did they put you together? Did you guys know each other? How did that work? No, I remember Handel was in an academy, and I knew what he was singing. And then I saw him. I just came to him. Hey, don't you want to sing together? And then he agreed, so we decided to sing together. Wow. wow. And when you're up in front of that audience on TV, are you nervous at all? What do you feel like? Well, of course we were nervous, but when we're when you're singing and do it, then you're nervous not as much when as when you sing alone. Oh, I love it. Well, listen, yeah, we I... Yeah, can I, we just talk about how she can speak English so well? Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. But listen, I, I want to play a clip uh, from that show real quick, and then we'll talk about all these, you know, not only do you do everything else, but you also, uh, I don't speak Russian. I know that. I don't know <laughs> You're going to learn some tonight. Yeah. You're going to learn some. Uh, here's a little clip of you guys singing uh, on that uh, Eurovision contest, the, the, the junior singers. Here you go. Get it on, get it on, get it on, get it on, get it on. Get it on. Time is coming each town. We've been people. There's no limit for us. As we are strong to unite all the world and break every wall. Keep the fire up and burning in our soul. Wow. Nice, nice. You guys, uh, did you guys, uh, did you, did you, did you finish in first place? What happened with that contest? Well, we were just sitting there when they were um, announcing the points. And when we heard that we have the highest point, we were very happy. And it was very, so we didn't wait for it. We didn't know that uh, we will have the most of the points. And when I heard it, we were very happy and excited because <laughs> we didn't think that we had the most points. So that's how it happened. <laughs> So it's a good feeling, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's so funny. Um, you have you have two brothers, right, and a sister. Yeah. Uh, do they are they into singing like you are? Do they like to perform? No. <laughs> no. They do other fun stuff. You're the singer in the family. You're the only singer in the family. Yes. Well, my sister sings a little. <laughs> nice. Well, that's interesting. Now, let me ask you though. You, you, you're in New York. Is this your first time ever in New York? Correct. Well, I was here when I was four, four, three years old. Oh, you don't but remember that, do you? I don't remember <laughs> that. So you could say, but it's my first time. So, here. what are your impressions of the Big Apple, as we like to call it? Do you like it? Do you? What have you done, or what do you like most about it so far? Well, I like that. Well, it's it's very interesting. I don't know how to explain it. I like <laughs> find some words, okay. you know. <laughs> you like uh, the restaurants? Did you go shopping? Of course, of course, we went shopping. I like the restaurants, and also I like the buildings because they are so big. And big, yeah. It's. When you look at it, you just can't believe your eyes because they're so huge, gigantic, and. 
yes it's interesting to look at them from different sides because you won't see it all the time we have similar buildings at russia but not red buildings did you ever did you try one of the hot dogs and from the street carts on the, <laughs> on the corners at all um not yet yeah don't oh, eat gotta, them don't no eat you them. gotta try one of those they're the best <laughs> Um, oh, goodness, but you know what? You're, the the crazy thing is, your talents seem to be endless, and you're you're a gymnast as well, like an aerial gymnast, not just a on the floor gymnast. You're flying in the air. Yeah, I can't believe it. So when did that start? When did you start doing that? Well, I remember when I was seven or eight years old. We were in. I remember where it was, but it wasn't in Moscow. It was in Italy, and we saw a performance of an air gymnast. And I remember my mom asking me, "Okay, do you want to do something like, for example, similar?" And I told, "Yes, of course. I want to try uh, aerial gymnastics." And then we found a studio there in Italy, where uh, I was studying. But when we get got back in Russia, which we were trying to find a studio where I can still. Um, train and then we found one and now i'm training there uh, you know what you need to do you need to sing while you're in the air yeah yeah while you're in the air if you could do that <laughs> then we'd really be impressed huh? we'd really be impressed with that. i remember i had an experience singing in the air it was one time and i was performing well not while i was there but when it was a song and when it and I did sing. I was hanging up there. Wow. <laughs> okay, that could be something you might work on. <laughs> Tanya, I know I know you have uh, some dogs and a bunch of pets. Tell me about this guy right here. Who's this? Oh, this is a horse. We were in Switzerland um, a time ago, a while ago. And his name was uh, Cuckoo. Cuckoo. Yes, Cuckoo. Um, is the horse's name? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Is he cuckoo? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I was <laughs> I was writing him, and he's a very nice boy. <laughs> he's a nice boy. He's a good he's boy. A nice boy. He's a good boy. Um, yeah. You you wrote, you co-wrote a song called "Time for Us." I wrote a, the words, a part of the words. You wrote, you co-wrote it with another person. Of course. How does it, can you give us a little of that one? How does that one go? The time for us? Yeah. Well, let's Russian. Oh, you can sing it for us. And Oh, yeah. You can just sing some Russian. I'd like to hear yes, it. We'd love that. И в нем так много прекрасного, но тратя жизнь на успех, позабыв обо всем, мы не станем счастливее. Вот преамбул, будет трудно и путь, gotta wake the world, продолжай свой путь, это время для нас, просто живи. That's good. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I mean, we That's didn't know good. what you were saying, but it sounded beautifully. Listen, Diaz, I'm not letting you off the hook either, my friend. <laughs> Last time you were on, you sang some good stuff. So, uh, Naomi, he was uh, he was singing the national anthem at Madison Square Garden. Wow. This, guy, this guy's all over the place. Diaz, give me a little something, man. I, I want to hear you sing a little bit. Go ahead. You know, you <laughs> caught me off guard, man. <laughs> Come on. You know you know all the He's tunes. Tired. You know them all. He's very tired. <laughs> it's give me that we should be together. It's unbelievable how I used to say that I phone ever. The bases you need to know if you don't know just how I feel. Let me show you right now that I am for real. If all things and time, time will reveal. 
yeah, hey, one, you're like a dream come true, two, just want to be with you, three, girl, it's plain to see that you're the only one for me, and four, repeat steps one through three, five, make you fall in love with me, if ever I believe my work is done, then I started back at one. Ah, nice. Nice. A lot of talent talent in that little room right there, right? Wow. Um, So are you guys going to do a a duet together, another one, or are you working on projects together? What's happening is right now we're having uh, Tanya here for the first time. Actually, we planned her trip um, a few years ago, right? Two years ago, yes. Uh, Her mom just, you know, uh, given us the exact date two years ago before the pandemic started. So they already got the tickets they were almost on the plane until everything got shut down right wow. so we had this whole schedule of activities for her she was supposed to perform record her first single and then you know everything got crazy right so if you heard about pandemic this is what happened to us yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of other people right <laughs> what what yeah. pandemic what are you what are you talking about <laughs> Um, listen, Tanya, there's a, a, a bunch of our uh, our viewers from around the country are saying a, a, they want to know, A, did you see the Statue of Liberty while you're here yet? Of course I did. The first day when we arrived, we went to look at the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I liked it very much because it was so massive. Yes. And gigantic. And my favorite parts are the crown and the foot. And the foot. <laughs> and also, are you, are obviously, you know, as an 11-year-old young lady, you have to be a big fan of candy, right? Yeah. There's a place in the city called Dylan's Candy Bar that you need to go. You need you ask who, who you're with, your parents or whoever's with you, tell uh, Diaz, uh, to take you to Dylan's Candy Bar. <laughs> It's the ultimate, the ultimate candy, candy store. store. You're gonna love it, and you'll love it. I bring my, I bring my. What's it? You gotta text me the name. So it's we'll it's it Dylan's D Y L A N S L A N S Dylan. I can't, I can't forget it because it's the name of one of my daughters, and I always bring my kids there, and we just <laughs> they 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 go nuts. And it's it's up on um it's it's Third Avenue, uh, right across from Bloomingdale's, right up on 59th Street, and and. You can't miss it. Just yeah. ask for Dylan's candy bar. <laughs> Everybody knows where it is. <laughs> Make sure you take her there before she goes home. <laughs> Man. So what grade are you in now being 11? You're in what grade? Six. I'm in year six at English school. And I am year five at Russian school. So this year I'll go to year seven in English. Wow. School. And this year... Russian school, I will go to your six. Oh my goodness. And where do you think, like, where do you see yourself in, you know, a couple of more years, five more years? I mean, what do you want to be? Do you want to driving. be? Like, She's going to be driving one of these, Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> What's your ultimate dream? Well, I really want to become an actress. Oh, oh nice. And She's already had some experience. Not a while. Acting? In, in film, yeah. Not really? a Really? Tell us. I was playing the one of the main roles in a film. And now, in plans, we have more projects. And I think I'll become an actress. And of course, I want some singing. So well, do you have to pick one or the other, or you can do both? Nah, she could do both. Lady oh. Gaga, Lady Gaga does both pretty that's well. That's true. So. That's true. It's amazing. Right. You're so good at both of them. You're very blessed. Um, and listen, before before you guys go, Diaz, I wanted to ask you. I, I understand you're writing uh, with Melanie Andrews, who yes. who who has been on this show. Uh, she was one of the backup singers for Janet Jackson back in the oh, day. Wow. She's very close friends with Janet, and she wrote that. What was the main the big song she wrote? Let, let's wait a little. Let's wait a while. That was one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what? What's that like? She was a she was terrific. Um, what's that like working with her on writing some tunes? Man, I'm I'm so excited. Uh, me and Melanie, we actually um, started this this new project, and we wanna um, start with one song I wrote 
uh, the music, she's working on the lyrics. And so I think that's going to be a great um, collaboration uh, between us. And so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about this. Um, that's great, man. Right that's now, great. Uh, technology and everything. So we don't have to be even in the same space to, you know, to, to get this going. And yeah. Awesome. What's the process like when you sit down and you say, I'm going to write a song, for example, for Tanya, how does that work? Uh, how long does it take you? And obviously you have to have a certain mindset when you're doing a song for a certain person, right? Yeah. Uh, for me is, uh, I imagine the person singing the song, you know, it's always starts with the imagination and then, you know, something magical opens up. I don't know where it comes from, from the space, I don't know, from customers, <laughs> but something magical opens up and I just, I'm just hearing the person singing the song. And so that's how it goes. And then, you know, there are goosebumps. If goosebumps are coming, then I feel like, you know, that's that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, this has happened to um, my recent single. I have a single in, in Russian called uh, 100 Roads, if you would um, translate it into English. And you know, I just recorded it, wrote it, and wasn't even thinking about much, but I just love the melody, love the song, and let it out. And now, you know, uh, my my friend, he sent me a message showing that my song is in top 200 in Czech Ooh. Republic, and then oh, uh, nice. in top, top 15 uh, in, like, top pop music in Czech Republic. So, oh, you know, my goodness. You, 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 it was just, I was, I was surprised, of course, and but this is what happens. You kind of enjoy what you're doing. And then, you know, I guess the results. That's uh, beautiful. Listen. And yeah, music listen. is so easy to get to now. Everybody can hear it all over the world, right? Yeah. So easily. Yeah. Uh, when they when they do the uh, news stories about her trip here to the U.S., um, I'm hoping we see a little clip, you know, of this show in the news piece like we did in Kazakhstan with Irie. So Diaz, can you make that happen for us? <laughs> You got you guys gonna be the, the superstars in Russia. Nice. Oh nice. yeah. Nice. Maybe you want to write a song for Scott. He's been yeah, Diaz, can you write me a tune? I want to sing a little something. <laughs> <laughs> uh Tanya, thank you. What no, sorry, I, before before we sign off, I just wanna say, you know, kind of to mention real quick, um, like yesterday she had a great performance in Birdland and it was S R O, right? It was uh, I saw that. I yeah. saw that. Full full of all of people and then uh she did very well and uh you know today we're working on her single mm -hmm. and then you know of course i would like to mention our partners bullion team ray and sandra the cost ah uh, yes uh working on um and bringing awareness to talents like tatiana uh you know making the whole world aware of what's going on around the world and mm -hmm. you know We'll continue to pursue this. Yeah, Ray and Sandra have brought us you guys, and of course, Irie, and, and she's brought us so many such great talents, uh, Bullion uh, Entertainment. Those guys are great. And I just um, want to shout out the, the studio we are in, Threshold Studios. Threshold. Threshold. I, I think Tanya is going to be a name we're going to see a lot yes. of in the future. And before you go, though, can you teach us something in Russian so that I can tell my family that I've learned some Russian tonight? Well, uh, hello is Priyet. Oh, you got to say that slowly. <laughs> Priyet? Yes. Priyet. Hello. And what is goodbye and thank you? Oh, this one is a tough one. Spasiba. Do svidanya. Do svidanya. Do svidanya. Yeah. yeah, that I've heard in movies before. Spasiba. Spasiba. Do svidanya. Okay, you say it much better than I do. <laughs> All right, I'll practice that and I'll get back to you, okay? What's the uh what, what's that what's the language teaching program you can get? What's it uh, called? It's called Stone. Uh, Rosetta Stone, Naomi. Go get some yeah. Rosetta Stone. Okay. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much, Tanya. You are a wonderful young lady and you will do anything that you want to do. Uh I could see that. You are fearless and you and are beautiful. amazing. And, and Diaz, keep rocking, my friend. You're the man. We love yes. you, pal. Thank you so much. Best of luck to you both. Love you guys. Take care. Great to see you. Dylan's Candy Bar. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, guys. Oh. Bye. Bye. Naomi. Wow. How amazing you know is that? 
it's so cool to see how like songs are done and artists are just sitting there and you got the guy writing it and then you got the great singer and I, it's, amazing. Great singer too. it's amazing. It, it, right? It's it, it's wild to me. We've had songwriters on the show mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, how do you, how the heck do, I could, I could sit here for a week and not come up with a song. Maybe I can come up with like a poem, <laughs> right? but, but to put like lyrics to it and yes. harmony, it's I'm like, Jesus, how, no. how do you, you, these are really talented people who are Very just talented. in a different, you know, different wheelhouse uh, and they're gifted, but she is really amazing. And I think we are going to see a lot of her in the future because she is like a, she's like a Taylor Swift to me. That's what I see, you know, oh my God. Uh, and such very smart, just and smart. And so my goodness, she can do so many things. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Um, amazing. What do, do, what do you want to do now? Well, I know you're, uh, we can't find Phil. He's in Colorado, right? And um, <laughs> I don't know where we could do some is. more numbers from the sound of music together. I'm sure yes. that that would just be so interesting. Let's finish. Listen, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just run down with tomorrow's activities. Okay, for do you. that. Uh, of course, <laughs> of course, uh, this program will be sent off to the Broadcasting Hall of Fame. <laughs> And uh, Stir and Crackle Plus and DBA Television and Snap and Pop. Um, yeah, <laughs> you didn't. You didn't know you're also on Amazon TV and Apple TV. I or, don't have a clue where this goes, and I. You don't even know. You don't even know. Dude, you don't even that's know. The beauty of this, right? You know. Um, <laughs> listen to this. So tomorrow, yeah. eleven thirty a.m. Yes. We're gonna come on live because why yeah. not? We can record or go live. We might as well go live. We might as well. Uh, Lawrence Gowan is the lead singer of Sticks. He will join us tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. Yes. Then you are not done for the day. Oh, what's next? Because coming up tomorrow night, we have Jack Blades, the lead singer of Night Ranger. Oh, he's I a... I know you love them. I Little do sister, love sister, Night sister, Ranger. Sister Christian. Sister, sister Christian. And then Brian Volks Weiss, who is a huge oh. Hollywood director. Oh. Uh, he, he collaborated with The Rocks Company, Seven Bucks Productions. Uh, to put together the Disney documentary that's on um, Disney Plus right now. Okay, so we're going to get the skinny on that. Nice. Oh my goodness, that, that documentary gives you the behind the scenes on how some of Disney World's biggest rides were came to be. Which I've always um, wanted to know because that place runs like an amazing, you know, tight ship there. And, and, yeah, and from what I understand, things weren't always so uh, very so, friendly when it came to those rides. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, so we have that going on tomorrow. Hopefully, everybody will join us. If you don't, the show will be up all day long. You catch it. will be up forever. Yeah. Um, so, Naomi, before we go, uh, I would like to end with a song from. <laughs> uh, usually, it would be so long, farewell, and then we could go through all of the, you know, you know, it's on, appropriate to end the show, but I don't have the words, and I have to go to my phone for that. All right, um, so here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. People are just um, clamoring for a duet. Do you see that? <laughs> oh, oh, they love the duets. They love the duets. <laughs> oh, uh, my word. On. I do think you that have, we're going to. You... Raindrops on roses and whiskers and on kittens. kittens. Do we know all uh, the words? This will be the challenge. Well, okay? listen, if, if you do you have any idea how to bring up anything on your screen other than the, the screen we're on right not now? Not really. No, can not really. Go, can you open up another no, window? You know what? I do not want to mess with this. Oh, no, you'll end up leaving us. It will, I will leave you and that will be bad. So I'll do it on my phone, though. Girls, so All right. So bring up the lyrics for uh, these. Raindrops on roses? Right, raindrops on roses, roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm and woolen mittens, brown paper oh, packages, packages tied, up. tied up with string. Hold on. Okay, my phone These is doing crazy things now. I can't even use my, my phone. Fave. Oh, Jesus. It says iPhone is disabled. Try again uh, in one minute. Disabled? What, what, what would you that do? mean? Why would oh, that could, do that? That means that you put in the wrong password a few, like once too many times. Okay, well, there you go. So I can sing it without the word. So you you lead. Ready? When the dog bites when and the, the bee stings, stings and I'm feeling sad, sad and I, I simply remember my favorite things, things and I, wait, time, and I don't think you're really off key there. Here's what we'll do. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> well, I'm always singing. Yeah. 
What's the song? What's the song that you love from the show? Uh, the Edelweiss, but I probably don't know all the words. But what's, um, is there one song that you know most of the words to? Uh, I think it's "So Long Farewell," "Avida Zangu," but whatever. Or Doa Deer, a female deer. Yeah, maybe Doa Deer. Let's do all that. Right. One. Let's do that one. Go ahead. You, you, we'll, we'll switch off. We'll switch okay. off. Okay, Doa Deer, a female deer. Ray, a drop of golden sun. Me, a name I call myself. Far or long away to run. So a needle pulling <laughs> thread. La a note to follow so. Tea a drink with jam and bread. Look at you, you sound like Julie Andrews. That will bring us back to do. Do, 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 a do, do a female dear Ray. I can't go that low. <laughs> Yeah, why are you going so yeah, low? I don't know. We messed it up. We were so good. We should have ended it right there. Me, your name, <laughs> I call myself. Uh, yeah. well, you got to well, sing it off like very flamboyant, like you're on Broadway. You do. You do. Yeah, and I don't true. have that in me. I you think don't have that. Have... You used to have that in you. What <laughs> happened to you? What happened to you? All right. I think the, the, the public is probably thinking this is so horrifying. Look, I don't you know. Sound you sound great, Naomi. Oh, Sing that's along it. just I once. Jeannie is my new best friend. She is she really you. kind and she yeah. said such nice things. Jeannie loves you. Are you kidding me? Uh, the ones that aren't <laughs> loving it are really not writing anything. That's the funny. <laughs> uh, well, listen, she yeah. sang for us. Diaz sang for, you know, you have to admit before we go. Yes. You, yes. You've been on the show since last Tuesday. That's right. right. So I feel Tuesday, like I've been here for uh, like a long time. months. I but do. Look at look at the eclectic group of people in the four shows that we've done together, five shows, including yesterday morning, yeah. that we've done together of the people that you've already met just I know, in the one this week. This is the funny thing about this show. I never know who you are bringing to the table. <laughs> you are... You're crazy. And people are just trying to get on this show left and right. I'm like, what is it about this show I don't that know. they want to be on with you? Naomi, I try I to stop Suki. the show. I think I, it's Suki. It's got, it's got to be Suki and Phil. I'm just the guy who runs no. it. And it's Jake. And yeah. no, it's you. It's you. You just have that charm. You know, it's, it must be. Uh, but that. just imagine, imagine all the people we've met in 250 yes, shows now. Honestly, are you going to go back and document this? Is there going to be a news story on the show soon? That I don't know. Not, I think unless, not unless I commit a crime or I'm caught with a hooker somewhere. You know, no, nothing. I need to. I need like the what's his name with um, Hugh Grant. Remember he was Hugh caught Grant. in the car. With, Boy, he's with, been silent. Where is Hugh? Get him well, on no. the show, will you? <laughs> Hugh Grant was silent, but then he was on that big HBO drama with um, Nicole Kidman. Okay. Do you which think I, what's that was called? <laughs> Does I can't. That was a great, great uh, series. Yeah. I can't remember the name. With Nicole uh, Kidman. Nicole. Yeah, Kidman. where 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 he kills uh, he kills the he kills his uh, the woman he's seeing, but the whole series you don't. Yeah, know. I do remember, and I never watched it, but it got a lot of acclaim. It really did. Yeah. It was a big Damn, thing. I don't remember it. though. It was really, I can't remember the name. Anyway, but, but anyway, um, all right. So yeah. we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah. I'll see you at eleven thirty, bright and early, Eastern time. So long, uh, farewell, farewell.